Hey everyone, it's Kenji. I'm at home and I'm going to make a frittata with things I found in my fridge. Asparagus, um, some scallions, some negima, Japanese leeks, um, or Chinese green leeks, and some kale. Um, Alright, so I'm going to start out by sauteing the asparagus. This is a real quick thing that I'm just throwing together for dinner. Um, some butter. I'm going to melt this up in this carbon steel pan. So, pretty moderate heat. Um, I'm probably not going to use all this asparagus, and I'm not going to bother peeling this asparagus today because we're not we're not blanching it. We're just uh, we're going to be sautéing it, so the texture of the skin is not going to really bother me as much. Plus, I'm cutting it into kind of shorter segments. Hey, I'm just shooting a video in here, FYI. Yeah. Uh, maybe a couple more of this, and I'll save the rest for maybe we'll make an omelet for breakfast: asparagus and eggs. Springtime staple. Uh, I found this chunk of an onion left in my fridge too, so we'll use some of that. Okay, and into the butter we go. Frittatas are like the thing to do if you've got a bunch of random vegetables that you're not sure what to do with in the fridge. Um, I'm going carbon steel. You can go in, uh, you know, you can go cast iron, you can go non-stick. You can even go in stainless steel if you want. Um, I like using carbon steel because it's lighter than cast iron, so it's easier to, you know, saute like this in carbon steel than it is in, in cast iron. Um, and unlike non-stick, it's, you know, it's much more, um, it's tougher than non-stick. A pan like this is going to last forever. This is a, I think this is a DeBuyer, is it a DeBuyer? Yeah, DeBuyer Mineral B carbon steel pan. There's all sorts of companies making carbon steel pans now. Um, and like cast iron, it gets seasoned and uh, forms a really slick sort of you know, never is, it's not, not ever going to be as non-stick as Teflon, because Teflon, you know, or, or other non-stick coatings that are chemically engineered to be that way, but it will become very non-stick, um, especially if you use it properly. All right, we're going to let that soften up a little bit. What else am I going to put in there? Oh, we'll put in some, a little bit of kale. I'm not going to use up all this kale. I'll probably make some kind of shaved asparagus salad with this with shaved asparagus and kale salad at some point with the rest of this for lunch tomorrow maybe. But for now, let's do, let's say that much kale. Oh, I got a bunch of cheese like nubs and stuff I gotta use up too. So we'll use, we'll grab those out of the fridge and use those. Kale, you always wanna take out the stem I was on, I um, can't remember if I've told this story, but I was on Guy's Grocery Games a while back, um, playing for charity, and I uh, thought I was doing pretty well, and then in the last challenge, I very stupidly um, was rushing and didn't pull the stem off my kale. Um, I grilled some kale for a, for a, a dish I was making, um, and I didn't pull off the stem, and I served it to the judges that way, which is an easy way to get them to eliminate you. If you want to get eliminated in guys' grocery games, forget to take the stick, the stem off the kale, and that'll do it. I'm just gonna let that wilt down just a little bit. All right, cheese nubs, cheese nubs. Mm, some Moses cellar. Hmm. Moses sleeper that is. Here, this is what we'll do. We'll pull out all these little rando cheese nubs from here. And that's what's going to go into our frittata. Cheese nubs are um, also a really good addition to quiche. If you prefer going that way. Make a pie crust, blind, blind bake it, or you know, or buy a pie shell from the supermarket, um, and then a cup of cream, 
a cup of milk or two cups of half and half. Um, a whole bunch of cheese nubs, like eight ounces or so of random cheese nubs. This is um, a thing that my buddy Daniel Gritzer um, showed me, how to, the best way to use up cheese nubs. Um, about eight ounces of cheese nubs, a uh, few eggs, two or three eggs, and then uh, basically you just blind bake your pie shell, then pour, uh, line, you know, dump your cheese nubs into the bottom of the pine shell, plant of the um, pie shell, and then pour that whisked um, egg and cream and milk mixture right on top and bake it 350 or so. Um, if you want, you could add a little bit of nutmeg. That's a real classic uh, quiche filling, but you bake it in a, in a 300 degree oven or 350 degree oven um, until it gets a little bit browned on top and the eggs are pretty much set. I don't know how long that'll take. 30 minutes-ish, 20 minutes. Um, and that makes a delicious, easy way to use up all those little bits of cheese that you had lying around. All right, that's pretty much wilted the way I want it. Let's, let's just throw the, let's just throw the little bit of this. We'll skip the scallions for today. And we'll just do this, which is Japanese scallions or, or Chinese green chives. I got those uh, at Asian Family Market here in, um, in Seattle, which is a big Chinese supermarket. I go there with my daughter sometimes and she gets to pick out what random vegetables we're gonna bring home. And this time it was green chives. All right, I'm gonna throw a spoonful of yogurt in there too, which I like to do in my frittatas sometimes. Sour cream would also work, or, or nothing. All right, now we're gonna go a whole bunch of eggs. Um, I put my eggs back in the carton because when I'm done with the carton, um, I just uh, compost all of it. Um, people have asked me, why do I poke the yolks of the eggs before I start whisking? Um, I do that because otherwise I find that it's hard to get the yolks to break down otherwise. Um, one of the keys with a frittata, I find is, well, salt your eggs, first of all. You want to get them nicely seasoned, but don't over whisk them. You know, you're not trying to make scrambled eggs here or it's like a super fluffy souffle or anything. Just enough to get them, just like that's good. Got it? And then, just to ensure that nothing's going to stick in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this mixture directly into the eggs. Um, while it's hot, this will actually also sort of speed up the cooking process for the frittata. Okay. I'm going to dump that in there. I'm going to wipe out my... Oh, see, so I can already feel there's little bits of stuff sticking here, to here, which is... Um, sometimes happens with carbon steel, you know, little bits of stuff sticking. So I'm just going to quickly... Give it a rinse so I have a nice smooth surface. Because any little bits of stuff, caramelized sugars or whatever, that get stuck to the uh, edge of your carbon seal or cast iron pan or your wok, if you try and make something that really needs a, a smooth non-stick surface, like a, you know, like a frittata like this or an omelet, um, it's gonna stick there. So you do wanna um, make sure you clean those off, all right? Okay, what are we up to? Nine minutes. All right, we're going to have dinner on the table in, I'd say, less than 15 minutes total. Start to finish. All right, let that new bit of butter melt down. Maybe that's overkill on the butter. I don't know. Mix, mix all this up. And I've got my broiler preheated already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this in the skillet and finish it off under the broiler. You can, of course, you know, do it the way you would do, say like a 
Spanish tortilla, or some people flip their frittatas also. You can, you know, you can always flip it out onto a plate or onto a pot lid, invert it, and put it back in the pan if you want to do it all stove top. If you don't want to heat up your oven for some reason, it's a totally valid way to do it. Alright, get our rubber spat. So pretty high heat now. You want it to really sizzle when you first put it in, and that'll ensure that your eggs are not gonna stick down there. Butter fully melted, but not really browned yet. And in we go. Don't wanna waste any. beginning I like to give it a few little tosses and turns, get some of that set curd into the center, also gives it sort of a speed boost and as far as cooking the center goes. Okay, and once we're there, about that point, so the eggs are sort of medium set but still quite liquidy on top and in the very center. That's why I'm just gonna smooth that out smooth it out a little. And transfer it to the broiler. Actually that broiler is a little bit too high. I had it set on the highest rack. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it down about about eight inches from the broiler. And that should just take a few minutes, right? So that's probably gonna take, oops, I'm not gonna shut it off. That's probably gonna take about five minutes or so, four or five minutes. Um, so I will see you in four minutes, three and a half, four minutes, I don't know, something around there. Um, and, ooh, look at we, look at where we are. All right, nice and brown on top. I can feel it's just barely set in the center. That's exactly what we want. All right, this is done. Now comes the only slightly tricky part, which doesn't honestly doesn't really matter if you're successful at it or not. Where's my here we go. so you want to get like a thin thin spatula? Run it around like that, just to loosen up the edges. Give it a few shakes to make sure that it's loose. Seems loose. We'll see how it actually we'll see how it turns out. No pun intended. Okay, and so we're gonna put this on top. And like I said, this doesn't matter if it works or not because if it doesn't, you just serve it straight from the pan at the table. It stays nice and hot. You pull it out a slice at a time. It's gonna taste the same no matter what, so who cares? But let's see if we can flip it out. Plate over the top, and one, two, three. Nope, that did not work. All right, so we're gonna serve it out of the pan. Get a little knife for this. Put this here, put that there. I'll leave the handle on the skillet. All right, I'm gonna go get myself a nice, moist slice. So I like mine the way I like my for, um, Omelets and my Spanish tortillas, so like a little bit, little bit loose in the center still. Um, but you can, you know, you can cook it as well done or as not well done as you like. Um, you just let it spend a little bit more time in the skillet or go on a lower shelf in the broiler. You know, or instead of using the broiler, just pop the oven on to like you know, like 350 or so, and let it let it bake in there instead of broil in there, and that'll give you a more evenly cooked center bit, if you prefer it that way. Come on, look out, it's hot. Oof. There we go. Moist, packed with vegetables. The 
way I like it. Should we give it a try? Guys, dinner's ready. So, you can do this with whatever vegetables you got. Doesn't have to be spinach and kale. Any cheese you got, it's like the ultimate fridge scrap thing. You are, after all, the um, the Spanish Armada of your frittata. <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, sorry, sorry, Shabu, here you go. I don't know, sit. Good girl. Hello for you, come on. Good boy. All right, guys, Gals Non-Binary Pals, a simple frittata. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.